Hello, John Muller from the JP Muller Group. And I get a lot of questions about uh, the, the formulas in my spreadsheet and how did I figure out you know, such complex formulas and, and how to make them work. Uh, there's not a lot of magic to it, but I do have a process I go through and I wanted to uh, use a hierarchical column today, which is one of the, more, the, the simpler formulas to kind of help you understand how I work through the process myself. So the hierarchical column is exists to give you kind of a visual um, display of the outline of a, a project plan based on like the the parent uh, child relationships so if I have a level one task there's no indentation level two has a little indentation three has more indentation four has more indentation etc and it gives you that that nice easy to read view that kind of visually lets you know which tasks fall under what sections of the plan um, based on the level. So how do I do that? Well the first thing I do is there's a, a hidden row and I'm going to kind of get rid of the formula so I could start fresh and uh, I'm going to hide that row again and uh, show you my process I go through. So at the most basic level if I were to just want to copy the contents of column M to column J I would type in column J equals M and the row number in this case 7. Okay, and you'll see I have the contents of M7 copied to J7. And if I copied that down, you would see that now all the contents are there. But that doesn't help me with the indentation. So what does, how do I do the indentation? Well, the first step is I want to concatenate some spaces at the beginning of the lines if they're two or greater in terms of their levels. So what I do, let's, let's show how they concatenate. Let's say I want to add five spaces to this. I'll make it equal, double quote, and I'll put two, three, four, five spaces within double quotes, and I'll use an ampersand to concatenate those five spaces to M7. You notice that puts a five spaces in there. And I'll copy that all down. And you notice now every line has five spaces. So now we know the concatenation part. Now what we want to do is make those number of spaces based on the level minus one. So level ones would have zero times five spaces or zero spaces. Level two would have one times five spaces or five spaces. Level three would have two times five or 10 spaces. Let's kind of work through that math first. So let's copy the value in L7 and minus 1 from it. And you notice it's 0 for the first one. And if I copy that down, it's 1, 2, 3, back to 2. So it's always 1 less than L now. But we want it to be multiples of 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in parentheses because order of operations will not want to do minuses before multiplication. So we want to put that in parentheses and then multiply by 5. So now let's copy this down. Now you'll notice that level 1's would have 0 spaces, level 2's would have 5 spaces, level 3's would have 10 spaces. Okay? So, let's now, now what do we do with that, right? So that's great, now we know how many spaces we have. How do we make that many spaces appear? Well, we're going to use something called a repeat function. So we're going to wrap this all in a REPT function. Open parentheses. And the first thing we tell the repeat function is what we want to show repeated. We want spaces. But visually, to make this easier to look at right now, I'm going to change it and put asterisks. So I want five asterisks. And I put that in double quotes, put comma, and the number of ones that I want. So I leave that L7 minus 1 times 5 here. Close parentheses. Now I have to copy it down. And you're going to see that many number of asterisks. So in this case, I'm going to have 0 asterisks, 5, 10, 15, 3 will go back to 10, etc. Okay. The next step is I want to add column n, or concatenate it. So I'm going to put concatenate, or ampersand, column m. And at this point, because I'm going to have some uh, words in there as well, I'll change that asterisk back to a space. 
because I already proved that that portion of this works. Okay, I'm going to now copy this formula down. And notice now I have my hierarchy. So let's, you know, copy this all the way down. Copy it. Oh, wait, look what happens. Once it hits a blank line, it doesn't know how to deal with some of these values. It gets an error when it tries to use some of these functions on those blank values. So what do I want to do? I want to wrap this entire function in an if error statement. This means, says if error, I'm going to open parentheses and have my function. Look at my function. If I encounter an error, return just empty, just two quotes, no space, just emptiness, or process the function. So now I'm going to copy that down again. And let's see what happens. Bam. Now it's blank if it encounters an error. Otherwise, it correctly shows me the hierarchy using five spaces for every level above one. Okay. One other little thing I did in here is I made this uh, configurable. So if we look over here on the preference tab, I have an indentation um, configuration. And you should be able to change that. Right now I have it at 5. And if I made it, let's say, 20, it would do nothing right now because that formula is not looking at this. So how do we make that look at it? Well, what I did is I defined a name range here. So if you look down here on our defined name ranges, and I go down, it's alphabetic order. Notice I called the preferences tab cell B3, which is what I'm highlighting right here. I call that indent underscore spaces. So let's go change our formula here and replace the five with the name of the range, indent underscore spaces. I'll hit enter. Oops, I did it on the wrong line. So let me copy it up one. Let me copy it down to all of them. And notice what it did. Now, that's kind of ugly to look at. I made it 20 for illustrative purposes. Um, as soon as I go back and I change this to 5, go back to our project plan, looks great. All right, so now we learned the name range. We learned the repeat function. We learned concatenation. We learned the if error statement. One last thing I want to do is make this so that if I insert a line, I don't have to copy the formula down. So for example, let's say I go and I insert a line right here. And I put another test here. And I put a 5. Notice there's no value here because there's no formula here. Look, no formula. I would have to copy the formula down. I don't want to remember how to do that or that I have to do that every time. So what I'm going to do, first of all, let me clear out this line. And let me show the show up here the, the, the blank row where I hide my array formulas. Now let me copy this formula that I wrote up to this blank line. And let me go and edit it up here in line six, which was our hidden line. And I want to wrap this in what's called an array formula. So I'll put array formula, open parentheses, put a close parentheses at the end. Now when I use an array formula, I need to go back to my cell references, L6 and M6. And I say, starting in L6 and going all the way to the bottom, I just leave L. If I don't put any number, it'll always go to the last row. And then I also want to do the same thing with M6, colon M or choose the whole column. And when I hit enter, now it's going to basically apply this formula to every cell beneath it to the end. OK, but I get a reference error. Why? Well, because I still have data here. I still have the formulas from before. So now I'm going to go in, and I'm going to highlight everything, except for the one I just entered with the array formula. I'm going to hit delete. I go back up, and now 
everything works. And notice it doesn't show the formula in each one of these lines. It only shows the formula when I'm in the top line. Let's look at something. Let's try to insert a line again. Remember we insert another test. Let's give it a line number, uh, excuse me, a level number. And without having to copy the formula down, it automatically populates in column J. So there you have it. Um, I could hide this again, but uh, I want to explain what we learned. So we learned how to reference a cell, how to concatenate it with other characters, how to repeat those characters for a certain number of times, how to reference a named range, how to deal with errors in formulas, and then how to apply my formula down a full column. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, please remember to subscribe.